Good morning and welcome to another online message here at House of Power Outreach. My name is Pastor Tori, Pastor Rita, and I'm pastor, senior pastors here at our church, and we just welcome you and invite you for coming in with us this morning. I also would hopefully uh, want you to subscribe. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and just uh, get in there and send whatever comments, encouragement. We, we could use it. We love it. We love it. And just not to forget, obviously, Christmas is celebrated Christmas yesterday. Thank God for a blessed uh, Christmas time. That, that you were able to have and, and hopefully you and your family just enjoy the day of celebrating the birth of Jesus, the birth of our Lord and Savior, which is what it's all about. So we're going to pray and we're going to enter in and just, you know, just get, get going with what God has got for us to do here. Father, we just pray. We lift a little, uh, um, um, little Maris Homery so, uh, that she fell in her head. We just pray for healing, Lord God, that there's no concussion or any type of head injury. We just thank you, Lord God, that there will be closure and, and that, that the scar won't, will be limited in all play phases. She'll be healed, healed and blessed as if it never even occurred. And we just thank God and we praise you for healing her body. We thank you for the message today, Lord God. I pray that I decrease, you increase. Give us ears to hear what the Spirit of God has to say. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Well, again, just, just even a blessed time of, of being able to uh, spend Christmas time with family, family members, loved ones, and kids, children. I just, I just pray the blessings of God overtake you uh, during this time and during the season just to be uh, glorifying God and being rejuvenated to, to be able to go out with a witness. And so with that, we, we're going to talk about how faith gives understanding. Uh, what goes around is subject to God's turnaround. And that's, you know, a lot of people say what goes around comes around. Well, what goes around as a believer is subject to the turnaround of God. And you might have gone around doing some things that you shouldn't have done, doing some things that you wish you never had done. But God's turnaround, is, those things have to confront with God's turnaround in our lives. And God has turned us from, from darkness to light. He's turned us from rags to his riches. And, and that's the understanding that we have to walk in. But it takes faith to walk in that understanding. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 through 3, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtain a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. So, so it is, it's, it's faith that helps us understand how the world even come about. So if that's the case in, in, in this world that was dark and formless, it was faith that formed when God said, let there be light and, and spoke everything into existence at that time. He spoke it all into existence. That it, it's faith. We understand that. We were not there. We understand it by faith. And you got to understand that when the minute uh, questions arise that you can't obviously go grab an answer and figure it out. You have to just trust by faith. God is the answer. God is what's what's bringing you and delivering you because without God, it wouldn't be possible anyway. And that's where we have to go. My thing that I've done, and I, I want to encourage those of you who, who, you know, when you come to Christ, it is it is by faith that keeps you in Christ. It's by faith that you were saved, by faith that you stay. You stay in Christ and stay understanding because based on what, what all we've been through and everything we've done, we were the ones that should have had to pay for our sins. But it was Jesus that paid for those sins so that we could be called his righteousness. Now, that's powerful and that takes a whole lot of, of just pure faith to believe because when we look at our own selves and look at how limited we are and what we are all about, we got to understand that there's a we should be paying. We should be the guilty ones. We should be the ones and yeah, by, uh, the, by the law of the flesh yes but by faith in Jesus we understand we're not guilty we're free and who the son has set free is free indeed so faith is, is made, made that darkness place of the universe as I said before it brings us into understanding when life seemed dark and it seems formless faith in God is our answer it is the it is the answer and I you know gosh I was just thinking uh, last Saturday, I was doing a eulogy, doing a funeral. It was my fourth one since July. You know, a lot of times when you're in those situations, people ask, why God? Why God? Well, when you're in that place, this is the place where you have to go and just trust God. 
and say, my faith is in God. I understand that God is my source and God is my refuge. God is my peace. God is my comfort. That's what I understand. And that's where I'm saying where you get your understanding from. Because, you know, trying to get a why in a physical world and in a, in a world that's limited in its information, let's go to the one who created everything, the King of Kings, Lord of Lords, the creator of the universe. He's the one that's going to have the answer. So we're going to submit our faith in God and trust that he is the solution. He is the solve. He's the answer. He is that answer. And that's where we get our understanding. I know that God knows something I don't know. Faith is what understands that grace is the undeserved gift, right? We understand grace is that unmerited favor, but it's faith to believe that you're going to get a gift for nothing. You know, it takes faith to believe that. It takes faith to show up and get a gift for nothing. That That is needed to save mankind from death, hell, and the grave. That is a powerful thing. You know, we, uh, Isaiah 55, 1, it says, Come and buy and drink and eat without money. Well, how is that possible? Well, I can believe beyond what my money can pay for. I can believe beyond what my education can gain. I can believe beyond my physical abilities because I'm believing in a God who can do all things. And that's where it is. I understand what you're talking to me about. I also understand what my God is all about. He is the one that's greater than man. He is the one that's greater than my information that I have on the earth. And I get it that the doctor's got all the facts, but it is God who holds the truth. And we have to go to the God who holds the truth and holds that in such a way that we are walking in joy even when there's disaster all around us. I know John Maxwell says the situation you live in doesn't have to live in you. And the reason why it doesn't have to live in you and don't you don't have to have it is because you're living by faith. You're living in the will of God. You're not living according to the situation and surroundings around you. You said thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So earth needs to respond like heaven instead of you trying to take earth into your heaven, make heaven into your earth. And you put those things and you provide yourself with the ability to believe. Uh, and it is that understanding that, you know, think about God coming to you, saving you and saying, you are free from all your sin. You're free from your past. Old things have passed away. Behold, you're a new creature. You're not the person who made those mistakes. I mean, you know, like, how can I believe that? I know I was there. I was there when I, I know I made those mistakes. I was there. Faith says you have been wiped clean without blemish. And it takes faith to understand that because if not, you're going to hold yourself hostage in mistakes that you made, uh, like you made them like what we call. Uh, immature type things or you did them not knowing you did them in ignorance that's the word I'm looking for because when we come to faith we are now knowledgeable of a God and a Savior who set us free from sin and death he came with a gift and the gift right like any gift you get replaces what you don't have or what you didn't have or what you were limited in before the new gift comes in and says here's what you are now it is that gift that you have. We can, we can definitely understand that with Christmas just passing, right? That, that the gift that I got replaced what I didn't have or what I didn't, what I didn't use before because now I have the gift. Hebrews 11, 6, faith is what pleases God. And it actually says without faith it's impossible to please God. So without it, it's impossible to please God. But with it, that's how I please God. I please God with faith and, 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 and understanding that because it brings us closer to him and away from the surroundings. And that's what's pleasing to God, just like any father. I, I, I man, I, my, my wife was talking about this, this Christmas, I was even more excited than ever before because, you know, able to watch the faces of my children and, and my family members as we got them gifts and, and getting as I got them gifts that they did not expect. You know, and I was like, man, I can't wait. I was telling the night before, I can't wait for Christmas. Like, I was having trouble sleeping. I can't wait. And that's back when it says the joy about waking up, being a gift, waking up, receiving the gift of God as well. But I was so excited. I was telling them, I was like, man, y'all, I got you this year. I got you this year. You know, God is saying that about you. I got you. I'm, I want you to wake up to what I provided you. Wake up to the blessings of God. Wake up that I've presented all power unto you. Wake up to your forgiveness. Wake up to being not guilty. Wake up to the fact that you can love. Wake up to being free from your abuse. Wake up to being healed from your broken hearted. You're waking up excited, running to the gift and blessings of God. It don't get any better than that. It doesn't get any better than that. So we look at that when we are sitting in the middle of an impossible situation. It is our faith that reminds us that our God is bigger than what we are going through. It is. It takes faith to know it sometimes because sometimes you can look at things and you can see 
see problems in your family or problems going on or death or whatever it may be. And you go like, man, but then your face is God bigger than this. Did you know that God is bigger than this? Did you know the one inside of you is bigger than everything around you? Do you know that? Do you remember that? And Luke 1 37 says with God, nothing will be impossible. And that's what faith, that's how it keeps us going. People go, man, you just, you just being naive. You just being, uh, gosh, negligent of, of what you see. No, I'm not being negligent. I see it. I'm just seeing my God bigger. I'm seeing my God greater. I'm seeing my God better than that. And since my God has called me to higher ways of seeing, I'm going to see in a higher way than looking down low. And so it, without, with God, nothing will be impossible. And our faith directs us toward who God is, our peace. Our peace will be settled within us. And that's where it is. It, it brings back that peace that God is. Because I'm like, thank you, God. I, I don't know how. I didn't know how we're going to get out of this financial situation. You don't have understanding of how you're going to get out of your fan, financial situation. But you do understand by faith that God is your supplier. He shall supply all your needs. He's your resource. He is your source. That's what you understand. More than what you can do. You can't go get another job. You can't uh, manufacture any more money. All you can do is use your faith and understand how God's going to come through for you. That's what it is. It is by faith I understand that the world was framed by faith. You can understand how God is taking your current situation and going to frame a world of blessing, a world of favor, a world of healing, a world of increase. He's framing right now. Your world because your faith is in him and understanding who he is. And that settles us in God. Belief in God who can do all things helps us understand that all things are going to work out good for those who love God. Romans 8, 38. God is so good at working things out for the good. Sometimes we wonder, God, did you bring the problem so you could show your good? No, God exposed the problem with his good. God doesn't bring problems so he can show off. God lets us, we walk through some things and then God shows up and says, look, I'm the good. Just keep trusting me. Because we know some people who don't trust God and they have problem after problem after problem after problem. And when they continue in the critical part of criticizing who God is instead of having faith of who God can be in their life, they will continue to have that problem. But then there are those who say, thank you, God, for working for the good. Thank you, God. I shouldn't have been here today. I, you know, it's, it's that all things work together for the good for those who love God. Keep loving God. That's our understanding that no matter what's happening, God's got a good to work out of this. God is going to work something out in my life. Faith reminds us that what goes around is subject to God's turnaround. As we've read in, in the subject matter before, it is. It's subject. What goes around into what, what goes around comes around. What goes around is subject to God's turnaround. Jesus came to give us understanding about his love, joy, and hope. And faith helps us maintain understanding while we're living in a fallen world. You know, we, we relatives that's passed away. Can't understand, but it takes faith to just trust God to bring that understanding. It takes faith to lean into God and healing to bring that understanding. And God says, we understand that God, that you were in control. And we understand that it is by you that I'm going to rest in you. And you'll bring me the good out of this whole situation. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 38 through 39 says, Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. And now it's just, right? We, we are the just and we live by faith. The just is, we got justification when we accepted Christ. And that justification is in the same sentence of saying, meaning just as if we'd never sinned before. God saved us that strong. The salvation is so powerful, just as if you never made that mistake before. It takes faith to believe that you are now as free as if you never made those mistakes. You got to understand how faith is working. My understanding about who I am and who I am in Christ comes through my faith in Christ. And you got to keep that faith in Christ. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, then what gets people under condemnation and get faster than anything else is when they start to take steps away from their faith instead of stepping toward their faith. When they start to step away, they start to agree with them being mistakes or them being something that's not worthy and them being something that's not uh, worth God. 
God dying for. And that's just not true. See, when you draw back, God can't have a place because you've given the place of trusting over to something else that is not godly. And God says, come on, let's get that trust back between you and I. Come back to faith. Come back to believing. I know things are hard. I know things are rough, but you're blaming the wrong person if you're blaming God. Don't let what's wrong with people keep you from seeing what's right with God. And that's the thing we have to pursue. What is right with God? Satan loves to speak things that are absolute truths about you in your past. It's just that that's no longer you. That's just no longer you. You're not living according to the un understanding of your past and the understanding of your limitations. You're living according to the understanding of your faith. You're living by faith. And that's how you understand that God came and saved your soul. The just having Jesus is justification. Living by faith keeps our understanding through God's power and not our limitations, especially when it comes to being forgiven. You got you got to know that you're not these things that said, well, you know, you, you, you did all these things for years. They're coming back to get you. No, God don't save like that. God don't. God saves you so completely that you're completely erased from all of your past and all the mistakes that you made. You're free. You're free. Who the son set free is free indeed. And so when you begin you get to that place of, of walking with God, that is the strength. As a believer, it is a sign that we have lost sight in our faith if we start drawing back, drawing back to believing into the problems around us more than moving toward the God that is within us. And that's what it is like, like, okay, God, I don't want to step out, I don't want to do anything. You're drawing back any form of back. Peddling, and I know, I know we talked about when it comes to sin about backsliding, but I'm not talking about sin, and I'm talking about just people backpedaling in their faith, not truly believing, starting to accept things that, that God has called us to be free from that God has called us to be delivered from. We accept him under the guides of whatever, even wisdom. You know, some fear masquerades itself as wisdom. People say they're being wise when they're really just truly being afraid. And God said, don't take step back. Move forward in your faith. Move forward in your belief. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7, it says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. I mean, what a powerful thing, right? Because everything, I can see everything around me, but it doesn't matter what's around me. I'm walking by my faith. You know, they, they, there's a famous quote that uh, I think it's Helen Keller said, it is one thing to be without sight. It's a terrible thing to be without vision. And so when you're without, when you don't have a vision, you know, you can look all around you, you can see all around you, but without vision, that's all you'll know is what's around you. Vision gets, gets uh, uh, opens up insight to what you are, can put your potential, what God's called you to be more than what's surrounding you and what's being. And so we walk by faith, not by faith, sight. Only faith can provide vision where sight is absent and give directions to formless roads. Roads that look impossible. You like you cannot see a way out of this. But faith gives directions in this formless road that you may currently be in so that we can fulfill God's purpose in that. He wants us to be able to say, God, there's no road. There's a river in God's desert. He's the river. He's the water that shows up. So just because we can't see means we need to just believe it. And that's the part that we have to come to. John 20, 29, people that believe, he was talking about but Thomas when Thomas said, well, I got to stick my fingers in the hole of his head if I'm going to believe. And that's the only way I'm believing. When Thomas did that, he said, Jesus said, you believe because you've seen. And Jesus turned and said, blessed are those who believe that don't see. When you can't see it and you still believe, you're blessed. Quit thinking that the stuff you have is a representation of your blessing. No, it's the God that you believe in is a representation of your blessing. Whether stuff accompanies that or not, it's the God that you are currently sharing your life with that is a representation of being blessed. The, Jesus says it right there in the scripture. And so I believe that we can, what we can touch and feel is so limited limited to what we can believe and know about who God is in this life. So don't, don't get caught up in your touch and your feelings. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17 through 18, it says, For our light afflictions, which are but for a moment, worketh 
a, a work good for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For while we for for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. And you got to look at the current situation you're going through. It's temporary. It's not here to stay. Your faith is here to stay. Your faith is going to outlast this as long as you use that toward this situation. What we are looking at now has no distance compared, right, to the eternal view that comes by looking through faith. This thing can't last. This is not a marathon. This is not something that's going to keep running in your life. You, you prepare your faith. Your faith is eternal. That's the only thing that runs forever. That's why Jesus said, run your race with patience, because it is faith that's going to keep you in the race anyway, no matter how it looks on the outside. You may be looking like you're getting behind in the rat race, but listen, the only one that they win that, that's just the first rat. You, they ain't running different race than you running. The world ain't winning. You are as you trust in God. We face earth's impossibilities with faith in God's possibility. I love that. We face earth's impossibilities in faith of God's possibility. So what God can do, right, is where we can, where we point ourselves to and, and guide ourselves and direct ourselves to over the impossibilities of this world. Faith in God hand in God's hand is what keeps us on track with God's plan. Those who just run automatically together. In Romans chapter 12 and verse 3, for I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Your, your most sober thought, the most sober thought is when you think about in faith what God has done to you. The most intoxicating thing you can do is start drinking in your past, drinking in your limited understanding, and start to contaminate the purity of your faith because of what's happening around you, to you, or even against you. You know, you go back and you go, listen, I've been dealt with an understanding of faith. I've been given the measure of faith. I've been given the enough. We are loading Loading with, we are loaded with all the faith needed in this world, which also means we have access to all the understanding needed in this world. Whatever you are struggling to understand, or the spouse, children, job, circumstance, you just stop. God, I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray in faith and believe you. Bring me to what I need to be understanding. And you may be seeking understanding from the wrong people. You may be trying to understand your wife when God needs you to understand who you are. Understand your job when you need to understand who you are. Understand your children when you need to be understanding who you are. And you have to turn to God. God, point me in the right direction of what I need to understand. And by your faith, as you put that in God, he's going to show you what to do. So a lot of times when we think everybody else is wrong, God gives us instructions to deal with us. Meaning, here's the understanding of how you're going to get beyond this current situation is because it's in you. And so it brings us that. So comprehending is faith being our beginning and ending of our daily life. That's how we comprehend. That's how we hold true. And that's how we hold in being a gift to God. You can understand no matter what the circumstances is, no matter how difficult it is. And you may have asked, I don't understand. And maybe your number one question. And God says, hey, you know, get in faith. Trust me. Because you, you, you bring understanding to how this world was even put together through faith. So I'm going to pray that you are strengthened in the measure of faith that you've been given. As you turn to it, is God's going to bring some understanding to some things. And some of us have some difficult things that have happened. Like, I understand why this happened to me. You know, you may be you may be loading up all the information that you have, but you got to go back in and read verse 3 of Romans 12. Don't think more highly than you than you ought to think. Think more highly of yourself. And you got to get back to sober thinking. Sober thinking that if God is for me, who can be against me? And I'm going to trust him. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you. It's by faith we understand, Lord God. And Lord, I just pray for all of those, who, all the people who are asking questions, Lord God, seeking answers of, and God, why is this happening to me? Why am I going through this? Why are, why are we up against this again? Father, I just pray that they stop 
turn to their faith and say, Lord, I put my faith and trust in you to give me understanding of what's happening. And Lord, I'm going to trust what your word says. And Father, I thank you for guiding them to the word of God, guiding them to what you've already spoken over their situation. If it's about death, you are going to show them, Lord God, how things are, are operating in the spirit realm. And Father God, they'll know that they don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against prince of powers and wickedness and rulers of the dark world. That Father, that they are coming into knowledge according to the word of God. Now, Lord, we thank you for what you've given us, the measure of faith. We believe we're receiving and walking in great wisdom to bring it to the world and lost people to see them saved and born again. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. According to next Sunday, we'll be talking about starting our fast. And, and so uh, we love you guys and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.